pompous flynn by ignatius brennan read for librivox dot org by elaine conway england pompous flynn sacred to the memory of james flynn known as pompous departed this life june the thirtieth nineteen ten total loss no insurance he says along about july or august or september a good-sized policy i'll buy you help me to remember so come around but do not bore me if you see me busy and though i'm really talking o societies with lizzie or on my way to see the game or chatting with a neighbour or telephoning some old flame or rightly down to labour just let me have my good old time and i'll try and remember that on your wagon i will climb not later than september now this was long bout patrick's day within the month of blizzards that test your frame in every way from bellows as to gizzards and a writer bluffed of course went on his way lamenting soliloquizing could be worse how few we meet consenting to buy the best thing in the land when kindly peddled to them but try and make you understand that you are there to do them well old july came rolling in the underwriter hurries to keep his date with pompous flynn who hates insurance worries but pompous just the night before was learning aviation the motor quit almighty roar and all was consternation and all therein were scared thereby as down the monster started another crack another sigh the mighty bag has parted they hit the ground an awful smash no physical endurance could stand this most concussive crash flynn died without insurance moral we have legions of flynns are you one of them end of poem this recording is in the public domain Percy Cranium by Ignatius Brennan, read for LibriVox.org by phone. In memory of Percy Cranium, born July 4, 1885, died July 4, 1910, a perfect sphinx for his years, just as mysterious and as firm as the Rock of Gibraltar. The underwriter starting out in fairly good condition bumps into Percy Cranium, a stiffish proposition. He asks forgiveness at the start with most profound contrition, having dared to call on him, he of such erudition. The first thing he explains, of course, is purpose of his mission. He shows a twenty-payment life which accident addition. He shows him every feature, then explains the small tuition that is required to turn the trick, the name's a good physician. He'll look him o'er, and though he be a Scotchman or Venetian, he knows he'll feel much better with completed requisition he played on every string he knew just like a good musician but cranium could not be switched from his well-set position the agent hiked and percy laughed to scorn his meek petition and said why that man is a fool the very last edition while percy loved the gasoline of strongest recognition the auto's chug was melody to him without partition one evening in the month of may he and the politician were driving at a rapid rate as to defy submission the road was damp the auto skid without a premonition adown the deep and dark abyss and their bland intuition would say that percy's up on high or floundering in perdition we knew and know him well though dead he lives end of poem this recording is in the public domain mr pomposity by ignatius brennan read for LibriVox.org. his stride down the street is the important sort his brows drawn as if deep in thought a facial gyration will oft times distort his features though perhaps meaning naught a facial gyration will oft times distort his pure affectation and others will say that the knit in the brow is simply a pose maybe goodness knows 
but we never could guess why he'd use it somehow you call at his office for this thing or that your card must proceed you of course he cons is it business or is it chat for what does he want this discourse but he's so busy his head's always dizzy and filled up with matters of oh so much weight tis simply astounding the way he keeps pounding the way at his tasks from the sunrise till late he's known and he gloats over the fact that he is as the busiest man in the town appointments with him must be strictly for biz and in this line he's there with the crown and he ne'er takes vacation of shortest duration though others may go to the mountain or shore he works on routinely and figures quite keenly on twenty per centum and wishing for more he knows every stock and he knows well its worth he knows when to buy and when not familiar with finance to ends of the earth all else to his brain is pure rot why you talk to honey he's doping on money and while other folk are at ball game or show he's doting on earnings with selfish like yearnings these yearnings that transfer your locks to the snow no one would invest say to any amount without asking this man's advice and of course if the buy was of any account he'd always wedge in on a slice those knowing him splendid would say his work ended whenever his poor nature demanded a rest even then in his sleeping we're told he'd be keeping the sleep got a watch for a chance to invest one day it was noted the eight o'clock bell found mr pomposity's chair vacant and inquiry brought back not well and the doctor suggests change of air but while thus arranging for this climate changing the nurse well detected a shortening of breath the messenger entered with every dart centred direct in the heart by this true archer death it is funeral service last tuesday at nine the sermon was short and concise the soloists sang in their style superfine and of course at their regular price the mourners looked saddened some say they were gladdened his business place opened next morning on time his splendid successor is a finance professor with every new method progressive and prime end of poem this recording is in the public domain she was truly a fattest by ignatius brennan read for LibriVox.org by phone she was a fattest kitty cruz though aside from that alert and pretty extremes of fashion just her views and looked exactly right thought kitty it seems as if she dreamed the plates of all the latest up-to-dates long long before the slower set betook themselves to thinking yet you mind when all were pointed toes the finer point the best creation well kitty had a score of those in shades to suit most any nation she too had coloured hose to suit her every shade of pump or boot a change of styles meant wholesome news to our extremist kitty cruz again take merry widow hats the widest ones correct for kitty reposing on extensive rats well we'll confess she looked quite pretty but seeing her at the matinee when all the ladies did display those hats that give the men a fit the smallest headpiece sat on kit the hobble skirt had scarce been planned when kitty waltzed down street right in it it surely classified her and we said again right to the minute then let dame fashion change her theme to just the opposite extreme why kitty doffed the tabooed one and put the very latest on you'd guess of course when kitty'd fall in love twould be with one as nobby not so she picked on john mcfall reverse of fops and those so snobby now john was one of these who when a style was going out why then he always got quite busy and went in and bought the last on hand no peg-top pantaloons for john no pointed toes of gaudy hewings no loose-cut coat thrown rakish on nor full dress at the evening's doings 
he'd wear no fuzzy wuzzy hats nor flashy coloured loud cravats until the time they'd spent their force and then he bought the bunch of course the sages who've watched cupid's ways all tell us that to mate correctly wed or opposites we praise those men for speaking circumspectly and if two ever lived who took their lessons from the rival book these were the real two all said but john and kitty loved and wed well time went by and little john's and little kitty's came to bother and to love and be loved ones the girls were all just like their father oddish in their dress and mien the boys alike dame fashion's queen their mother style to the last cent always broke or badly bent end of poem this recording is in the public domain running for office by ignatius brennan read for librivox dot org by trey hauk running for office ever a candidate no why old man there's something you've missed now as quick as you can pick out some good office you'd like to attain and then cut right in with your might and your mane don't pick something small and worth nothing at all save honor though honor is some pumpkins too when your fortune is made and your troubles are through but honor to one with a family of eight and pork chops at thirty the pound butcher's weight is well it's all right but the job i'd suggest is the one where works lightest in salary best now well we'll just say state auditor eh to get this, you send your announcement, statewide, to all daily papers and weeklies beside. You ask them to run it, they answer just fine, though add, advertisements are ten cents a line. But since through this ad you may pull down a prize, we'll set it in type of a different size. Like, ten point, for instance, the sort that we use for meetings and other political news. And here we will state, our directors of late, have put special stress on the candidate's rate. And that is, they first find the size of your pile, and then set the price at a figure worthwhile. Now, say an event that your money came soft, and they'd heard you'd been touched in how easy you coughed. In cases like these, European in plan, fifty and up, or as much as they can. And then you let go of your first bunch of dough. The announcement is spread to the four winds, and then on come the letters from prominent men, suggesting you write, say, to John Henry Smith, and let me add here this John Henry's a myth, and have him to see all the delegates who, do the convention act, tried men and true, instructing them rightly and binding them tightly, for you to the last without any release. Of course this will cost you oh so much a piece ballot on ballot proceeds till at length you hear where you might gain a little more strength by seeing a bill jones from the county of clay this seeing is done in the usual way he's seen they proceed each staunch county to read commencing with a in the time-honored way till the leather-lunged clerk calls the county of clay right here jones makes good as he'd promised he'd do announcing the county goes solid to you then on down the list of the counties they go till your most bitter rival well knows they're no show when some bassoed fellow yells out with a fuss i move that we make it unanimous end of poem this recording is in the public domain The Fourth of Old July by Ignatius Brennan, read for LibriVox.org by Betty B. Our poets gave us songs about our heroes, old and young. We sing them with a fervor and with sentiment a strung. We tell the praise in joyous lays so pleasant e'er to hear of those who gave their lives to save our liberty so dear. We laud our soldiers of the sword who fought on land and sea who did their fullest duty in the bravest of degree we take no laurel from their brows nay nay we twine them high but give the same to those who gave us fourth of old july one hundred yes and thirty-eight 
long years have passed away since dear old independence hall was decked in flowers gay when sturdy men pledged honor then and life and fortune too not for applause but for the cause of liberty so true to-day we take the stars and stripes and fling them to the breeze and shout their praises long and loud in proudest ecstasies our prayer to-day is may the spirit ne'er be doomed to die but stronger grow as time goes on each fourth of old july end of poem this recording is in the public domain those gallant boys in blue by ignatius brennan read for librivox dot org by betty b when strife and chaos well prevailed from eighteen sixty one when our dear standard was assailed and old fort sumter's gun announced to all the world the fact and called for men so true who answered to that quickened call and pledged their lives their wealth and all those gallant boys in blue were with them down at petersburg on dear virginia's plain were with them up at gettysburg in penn's sylvan domain were with them at antietam that awful field of gore at lookout mountain vicksburg too till appomattox brought to view back in those days of yore we see them in that former day the pride of all the land in march and camp and in the fray so brave so true so grand with step so light and eye so keen their country's flag to save determination in their heart and steel to do a gallant part or fill a soldier's grave to-day we see those splendid men of fifty years ago we watch them on their march again their step has changed to slow their ranks are thinned their form is bent their eye is far from true each with a garland that he'll lay upon a comrade's grave to-day a comrade boy in blue eighteen sixty one to nineteen eleven we're with the gallant boys in blue half a century ago we watch them march to music true forward to face the foe their every fibre tingling with a spirit do or die to fight with might their cause of right that cause of liberty we see their forms erect and grand their shoulders firm and wide their agile limb and deftest hand we see our country's pride in uniform of truest blue with musket and the sword and filled knapsack upon their back all ready for the word we hear the bugles call to arms we hear the firm command we watch them charge midst war's alarms with bravery so grand we see them in the burning sun and winter's frost and snow till sweet-winged peace brought their release near fifty years ago we've watched their ranks on since that day grow thinner year by year we've seen their hair transform to gray their step to halt and veer no more does martial music bring them back to fields of gore or army life or scenes of strife in those dread days of yore to-day we watch the country's pride of fifty years ago we see them marching side by side but not to face the foe instead they tread to solemn strains with choicest flowers of may to deck the grave of their dead brave this blessed memorial day end of poem this recording is in the public domain this fourth of july by ignatius brennan read for librivox dot org by bill mosley lano county texas u s a from the wave-beaten coast of the raging atlantic to the peace and the calm of pacific's bright shore from his majesty's realm to old mexico frantic our colors are waving so peacefully o'er and the spirit of war that is rife in the air in europe in asia and most everywhere is not our lot thanks to the good god on high we're at peace with the world on this fourth of july to-day we run back through our history's pages to days when our country was weeping and wan 
to the day when that band of illustrious sages said to the oppressor we bid you be gone said we pledge our lives and our fortunes as well that henceforth we're freemen then liberty's bell from old independence hall sent to the sky the sweet chimes of freedom that fourth of july we're with them in spirit five years through the valleys and over the mountains through oak and the pine in victories routs in defeats and in rallies from ticonderoga to old brandywine savannah to boston and on to that day at yorktown that well marked the end of the fray when england's proud hosts ran the white flag on high establishing truly our fourth of july this is our day and we ever will treasure it as a prized heritage sacred and true this is our day we rejoice without measure and fling from the housetops the red white and blue this is the day where americans all united we stand not divided to fall one bound fraternity none can untie here's to our country this fourth of july nineteen fifteen end of poem this recording is in the public domain memorial day by ignatius brennan read for LibriVox.org by bill mosley lano county texas u s a scatter the garlands on each grave alike a rose for the blue and a rose for the gray then each a lily so pure and so white on this day of peace memorial day seal up the book of the radical pen clasp tight the hand in this flowery may apart in opinions together as men leave the past with the past on this hallowed day each green mantled grave holds the dust of a man who fought for a cause that he thought to be true to-day though we know of no party or clan and make no distinction between gray and the blue as he who was clothed in the garbing of blue and he who was garbed in the clothing of gray long since bridged the breach that divided the two and who dared to ask was the suit blue or gray nineteen fifteen end of poem this recording is in the public domain this fourth day of july by ignatius brennan read for LibriVox.org by bill mosley lano county texas u s a while other skies are streaked with red and rivers crimson dyed death messengers afloat o'erhead death dealers neath the tide while widowed and the orphan prey hostilities might die we're in profoundest peace today and ask the lord this peace may stay this fourth day of july no prancing steed with warlike tread no horrid battles roar no trenches filled a flush with dead no crape upon our door no drafting on our country's pride no parents anguished cry no marches forced no midnight ride no weeping last no morning bride this fourth day of july our colors float from highest mast from hilltop to the breeze our minds run back through the past we sing the praise of these who made up that immortal band that said we'll do or die that slogan that spread o'er the land re-echoed back to sea and strand that fourth day of july while we're at peace our sympathies go across the briny wave we mourn in europe's miseries 
revere her splendid brave. Our earnest intercessions wind their way to him on high. Ah, would that he would choose to send a message that this fight will end this fourth day of July, 1915. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Our Own Henry G. Davis by Ignatius Brennan Read for LibriVox.org by Bill Mosley, Llano County, Texas, USA It seems to be so human-like to hold the praises due a fellow man until his earthly task is finished and the cold, cold hand of death has bade the form be still. But we've been taught, to whom a flower is due, bequeath it while the flower is fresh and new, the while the one to whom it you'd present can graciously acknowledge the intent. A page to West Virginia's grand old man is just a paltry jabber, when we know that volumes could be written, that to scan the same would set each mind aglow with thoughts of what a mortal man can do when bland determinations kept in view. No other state can boast of such a peer, hale, staunch, and wholesome in his ninetieth year. He looms as a connecting link of time, a link that starts when our domain was young, then stretches across the cycle so sublime, and joins all with a climb of every tongue before the locomotive raced the rail before the harnessed lightning pierced the veil before a thousand things of wondrous make he lived and gave his being for their sake hail proudest roman of them all thrice hail we greet you in no selfish state proud way but as a man with no such word as fail in his vocabulary. So today, salute you as a country builder, one whose task is finished when the fight is won. We pray, old time, who's been so kind to you, may grant you lease till 1922. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. A Leper by Ignatius Brennan, read for LibriVox.org by phone. Yes, tis a leper, it hails from Missouri. Worse, ay, far worse than the Molokai kind. The Molokai type just destroys the poor body, while the Missouri sort kills the soul, heart, and mind. Lecherous, viperous, poisonous foe, to all humankind, wheresoever twill go. There's not so repulsive as stench in the nostrils from dead human flesh that is rotting away yet how we prefer i a thousand times over that smell to the stench of a soul in decay doomed yes self-doomed by the mind in control lustful degenerate putrefied soul it flaunts to the breeze this illiterate bigot its standard the crude anti-catholic one when deep in his heart it well knows it is fighting all christian alliances under the sun it bows and kotows to the schemers who know every move of this cursed pusillanimous foe. It heaps malediction on those holy women who beg to assist in the care of God's poor, who ne'er ask a penny but one to be handed to those to help drive the starved wolf from the door, who'd help nurse to health in the body at least this filthy detractor of sister and priest. It fights, as it puts it, the Catholic doctrine, when not one iota it knows of the creed its mission not but to unearth narrow bigots and get their subscriptions for personal greed each succeeding issue is a bidding for cash to help to perpetuate filthy rehash it boasts of an army of five hundred thousand a cowardly hiding gorilla like horde who'd flee to the woods on the first smell of powder or hide to the marsh at the sight of a sword an army that fifty true soldier-like men armed only by nature, could drive to the glen. Army, an army of dupes of a siren, 
whose song as they wanted they hear as a call who part with their shekels for soul-killing venom that covers the heart with its hideous pall menace how wondrously well you've been named a menace to everything virtue has claimed end of poem this recording is in the public domain europe's war by ignatius brennan read for librivox dot org by eliza swan see the crowd are standing yonder see another here and there heads together and we wander what on earth is in the air each one seems right at attention listening talking earnestly we grow bold at last and mention what these confabs mean and we find is what we all abhor talk is all of war 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 true and none would dare be quizzing when twill start tis on today war dogs belching bullets whizzing claiming human lives for prey europe's sun is crimson painted shining fiercely from her sky europe's streams are hued and tainted with blood of her yemen rye europe's heartstrings sad and torn homes deserted and forlorn tales of carnage that the sages tell us of the olden time writ his on history's living pages both prosaic and in rhyme will remain but unastounding when compared with what we'll see in this strife that seems abounding even more than rivalry hate's dire venom seed of mars rules in this the worst of wars austrian blood and the slavonic will be mixed with russian gore french italian and teutonic now will run as ne'er before england's best will intermingle with the mongol japs and old mother earth will be a tingle as she quaffs them manifold war what mind would stop to praise your worldwide devastating ways would our pen were so prolific it could trip the words to bring settlement of the pacific sought to last from spring to spring peace god's chiefest gift and given that in our opinion we all may have a glimpse of heaven in this world of jealousy peace ah oh, would that she today were reigning where the war dogs play this recording is now in the public domain wild bob berman by ignatius brennan read for LibriVox.org by phone see that awful hood he wore as he broke all records driving looks bout the knights of yore when they started out for gore or the lad who does the diving hate to meet him in the dark after say a ten days lark my the mighty run he made more than a mile in half a minute nerve must be of special grade with no streak of yellow shade anywhere about or in it goer bob will pat your back every time you clean the track but sir robert wait a bit while i preach a little sermon long as you are strictly it you'll be sure to make a hit cheer on cheer for wild bob berman but when someone trims you bob right from then you'll be a slob then another thing i'll say be ye irish dutch or german something's going to give away on your auto car some day rest in peace for wild bob berman keep your soul as nice and clean as your blitz and ben's machine when you're gone we'll buy some flowers place them sadly round your casket reminisce with friends of ours how we worked for hours and hours gathering you into the basket bob you do as you darn please we'll still use the single trees end of poem this recording is in the public domain The Woman with the Baby by Ignatius Brennan Read for LibriVox.org by Velma Karras, August 2018, California Poet after poet, and prosaic lad as well, in deepest concentration have endeavored best to tell of a subject where each writer would be happy to excel. The woman, precious woman, with the baby. They have told and told it truly that no matter where she goes, and no matter what her station, or no matter what her clothes, she is always shown an honor that a mother only knows, this woman, much-loved woman, with the baby. No matter though the street-car may be crowded to the door, 
or the ferry-boat be jammed as one had never seen before or the pullman be so packed until you think no room for more there's room for her this woman with the baby the church pew may be filled and others crowded in the aisle the standing-room sign flaunted in the theatre's best style just let this lady enter with her kiddo and a smile there's always space for mamma and the baby or take the town on circus day with streets one surging mass pedestrians a-pressing on in hopes to find a pass her ladyship approaches with her go-cart largest class we find a path for mamma and the baby again we see the midway at the circus or the fair squeezed in like french sardines and pushing crowding here and there a squall from out the kidlet so demanding rents the air we doff our hats to mamma and the baby but did you ever chance to see the father and the kid when mamma's out a-searching for the springtime's latest lid a hanging to the strap all chorus jingles get the skid tis quite a joke this daddy and the baby just see him with his offspring gently seated on his wing and mamma god knows where she is but that's another thing we watch him moving up the street well boys it's time to sing a few more years tis papa and the baby these few more years are coming tis the safest sort of bet the years when man will gnash his teeth and weep and wail and fret because he cast his vote by which he made the suffragette and then good-bye to mamma and the baby for if by chance the stork should drop a baby here and there the man with equal rights of course will have to do his share a rocking of the cradle while the mother will prepare a bill to pension daddy and the baby end of poem this recording is in the public domain veil vale, 1914 by ignatius brennan read for LibriVox .org by betty b good-bye old year 1914 tonight at twelve you're due to scoot and no wise wishing to be mean we hope you'll shoot the smoothest shoot into the deepest lake you bet wherein your boat may then upset and throw you out into the pool whereat you'll have a chance to cool from all the warm things said of you you've surely been an old hoodoo now when the old bell peals the hour don't feign you're not quite packed to go we'll do all things within our power to see your trunks are thus and so in fact you haven't much to pack but we'll put one bunch on your back and rightly hope to hold it there till you vamoosed into the air bad business brought by strife and fray nineteen fourteen veil veil end of poem this recording is in the public domain welcome nineteen fifteen by ignatius brennan read for librivox dot org by betty b well nineteen fifteen how de do with open arms welcome to you we ask you be our guest we hope you've brought with you today good cheer good times to make your stay with every comfort blessed at every fireside in the land we'll meet you with an outstretched hand and coax you sit and lend your ear while we tell what we want this year we'll ask you first to give us health then add to our depleted wealth by calling on those men who clasp our coin when times were good and paid us three per cent or should as time and time again we've shoved our savings through the bars to them and thanked our lucky stars that we knew they would save our swag please ask them ope their money bag now while we know it is the rule to never tell tales out of school we'll take this one small chance your predecessor got in wrong right from the start he played things strong and led us all a dance he gave us war the worst one e'er that killed our commerce everywhere he never cut one high price down just acted reckless as a clown we ask of you to take his slate and crack it on his shiny pate and place yours in its stead then right thereon i'll stop this fight the mills and marts i'll start aright i'll cut on meat and bread 
i'll mine the coal in every hill i'll start again the oil man's drill now if you do these things my boy your purest gold with no alloy then when your new successor'll come we'll tell him he must travel some end of poem this recording is in the public domain when men heed by ignatius brennan read for LibriVox .org by betty b a mob would never be a mob if all would only heed their better judgments call none e'er would bow in grief that awful day when called to wash the crimson stain away if men be guided by advice of men who oft drove passion folly to her glen the teaching that the blade we wish to send through our opponent's heart must at its end be charged with acid vitriolic kind before twill do the work we have in mind is wrong for when the fiendish work is done strong foes by scores replace the single one we have too the oppressor humankind who sees our faults but to his own is blind whose mandates are so iron-clad and bold who's complimented when decreed as cold who should his drastic rulings chaos bring would hide behind the battlements and sing when e'er a radical on either side presumes to act as counsellor and guide tis naught but sheerest duty that we say a cool conservative and splendid nay that he may learn the lesson there and then do unto men as you'd be done by men end of poem this recording is in the public domain the old mulberry tree by ignatius brennan read for librivox .org by betty b i dreamed and my fanciful wanderings took me back to my home in the dell i played in the willows long side of the brook i plucked the blue violets lounged in the nook by nature arranged and so well i strolled through the orchard i drank of the spring whose waters were sweeter to me than nectar of gods or the wine of the king i sat while the robins so sweetly did sing from the top of the mulberry tree then i woke for the thoughts of that mulberry tree were more than my brain could withstand for i saw myself climbing with youthful like glee to the very tip-top where the robin sang free and i was the king of the land the dear juicy berry two inches or so and a quarter inch thick in the least i knew just the limbs where the big ones would grow and once i was anchored i'll have you to know i was there for a mulberry feast sweet dark-hued and juicy fistful at a time one squash and no berry no more the taste on my palate was simply sublime how i wish i'd a bunch while i'm penning this rhyme no you ne'er stopped to yank out the core how i'd munch munch some more till my poor stomach felt as if twas quite ready to bust i'd grow quite resourceful unloosen my belt fill in all that space how with envy i dwelt on those left as i went in disgust i see that old tree and i see myself there with my stain-covered fingers and say don't mention my cheeks as that wouldn't be fair say naught of my breeches and naught of the tear they were at least of my thoughts on that day now take all the scoldings my mother would give and the trimmings pap handed to me that made me feel oft as the real fugitive i chance the whole bunch if once more i could live as i did in that mulberry tree end of poem this recording is in the public domain To Our Departed Brothers by Ignatius Brennan, read for LibriVox.org by phone. With heavy hearts and heads bowed low, we gather in God's house today. We turn time's hands to days ago, and see our brothers, all aglow, with life and vigor, blithe and gay. We hear their greetings as they pass, the hands turn back, alas, alas! For when their names are called so clear, we list, but no responsive, hear no ne'er again upon the shore will their glad salutations ring the splendid hand-clasp that they bore 
the wreathing smile their faces wore the happy songs they used to sing have all been stilled by that firm hand that beckoned them to that better land that land where all choice blessings cling the land of him our god our king our hearts go out in sympathy to all their loved ones left behind our loved ones too they are for we are brothers true in u c t and we must e'er bear this in mind that ray of hope that shines for years will help to dry the mourner's tears and we behind that hallowed ray must ne'er forget our part to play again as time moves on apace we each will join death's caravan some fair white hand will one day place a lily's bud within the vase for us such is the lot of man and may no everlasting taint of sin our lily's petals paint and may we reach that blessed land to grasp our brothers hand in hand end of poem this recording is in the public domain the municipal christmas tree by ignatius brennan read for LibriVox .org by phone christmas eve in the courthouse yard will gather the painter the clerk the bard the lawyer the doctor the teacher the maid the mother the daughter in best arrayed the mayor the sheriff the editor too the peer and peasant the christian and jew where all will be cheered by the singers of song gathered together in one vast throng here all will be merry and full of glee at our municipal christmas tree laden with stockings for girls and boys filled with candy and nuts and toys from toe to top and filled again with choicest wishes of women and men that their days be many and useful ones through the winter's snows and the summer's suns and to teach this lesson when grown to men and women they'll treat the children then as they've been treated to them be free and give them many a christmas tree to the goodly women who made this true an endless amount of credit is due but appreciation is all they ask as this good work done was a pleasant task the gifts themselves are of priceless worth since they speak of that that is best on earth love for those who deserve this love divinely shaped by the one above this one who spoke with sincerity suffer the little ones come to me end of poem this recording is in the public domain essence of election day by ignatius brennan read for librivox .org by phone for three long months the mounts and hills and valleys in between have echoed and re-echoed in a most auspicious mien with sharpened oratory so political each way but thank the lord it's finished and today is election day the campaign is now over and before tomorrow's sun the bulletins will tell us all just who has lost and won the battle of the ballots is now on from shore to shore the trusty henchmen working as they've done since days of yore singing out the praises of their candidate to all who of course if not elected why the government will fall and every other argument far-fetched shelf-worn and thin is given so their favourite through any means may win we see the sturdy yeomanry repairing to the polls we see the judge and challenger a scanning well the rolls to see that each is qualified to exercise the right of suffrage and if found correct he does it with a might we see him coming home with countenance that seems to say i've done my duty and thank god for our election day tomorrow's evening sun will set an officer's brand new along with those experienced a wise decision too and should they be our party's choice the ones for whom we fought they're our officials just the same as our forefathers thought we'll shake the victor's hand with sense if ours or not our own in politics the sovereign folk have made their wishes known from their inauguration day until their term is o'er the servants of the people simply this and nothing more and since we like our servants to do right day after day let's help our office holders in the same well-guided way throw politics to windward put our shoulders to the wheel flaunt common sense high up above this foolish party zeal end of poem this recording is in the public domain in behalf of a retail clerks by ignatius brennan read for LibriVox .org by phone 
how long will this outrage continue this slave-cursed practice whereby american brain brawn and sinew is bartered that we may supply our wants when our week's work is ended a habit from lack of foresight we ask that this crime be suspended this toiling on saturday night just gaze through the mesh in the wicket and watch the poor girls at their work as timed as the uniform picket with far slimmer chances to shirk expect it all times to be pleasant though nature is strained to maintain the smile for the peer and the peasant no no she must never complain from early on each monday morning till late on each saturday night the one steady grind never scorning employers or purchasers right though some of the latter are trying especially those who before their marriage were selling not buying and perhaps in this very same store the great god had never intended that women be made a machine we'd reckoned her serfdom had ended as taught by the dear nazarene but man thoughtless man whose regalings are wafted o'er mountains and lee and quick to see other men's failings is blind if this one he can't see protectors of organized labor and we your staunch friends tried and true be kind to the girl of our neighbor or nearer to me and to you be not moral cowards by throwing the blame on the merchant for he would be only too pleased at knowing on saturday nights he'd be free so yeomen and women attention the remedies placed in your hand requiring i e'en but to mention to wipe this one curse from the land let's say without equivocation and all with the attachments of might our clerks must be granted cessation from labour on saturday night End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. The Grave I'd Have by Ignatius Brennan, read for LibriVox.org by phone. I sit by the side of a lonesome grave, tis the grave of a pioneer. History tells he was bold and brave, nor wishes, nor fame, nor honor he'd crave, but the love of those near and dear a broken stone gives his name and age and the chiseling rhymester told his virtues as those of the cherished sage his teachings the best and his tutelage more value than piles of gold i fancy the day that the grave was hewn i fancy the tear-checked sigh i fancy the flowers o'er his cold form strewn i fancy the organ's doleful tune and i fancy each wail and cry again i fancy the pledges made that this mount would e'er be green that the gardener's craft with hoe and spade should never wane and the cedar's shade would be the best the world has seen i see it now a gaping space with the briars clustered through and thrifty thistle with bold grimace all decking the last chill resting place of that loved one tried and true and in my mind i formed a plan of the grave i'd have me in when i've completed this life's short span and am stowed away from the views of man my new life to begin i'll ask that the hole be good and deep say eight feet six at least be sure real sure tis my last long sleep and when all have had a farewell peep slide me down with my face to east then roll the clay in sure but slow and tamp it good and tight fill every space i would have you know so as all may be sure i will stay below and have given up the fight fill till all space is filled a flush with the other earth around still tam tight so as no lark or thrush could penetrate in through the silent hush with their much opposing sound then place o'er some healthy sod the thick well-rooted kind so deft so well that whoever may trod thereby or o'er need never nod with the thought of a grave in mind I want no stone to tell who's there, no epitaph a song. I'll merely ask an occasional prayer be said that my soul may enter where I wished for oft and long. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. To the Graduates by Ignatius Brennan, read for LibriVox.org by phone. Fresh from the fields of bloodless strife of conqueror you come not to the sound of shrieking five or musketry or drum no flags are floating to the breeze no set salute is blared 
yet far more grand than all of these the honours you have shared your brow is decked with wreath of green so emblematical of mastery though steel as keen as yours did rise to fall but with your armour girded on your trusty blade on high you fought your way to triumph one with motto do or die your sons of toil your restless moons are reckoned with the past your chill decembers gloomy junes now float at lowest mast and in their stead we find aflung the, the brightest hues to-day your pennant is so rightly strung with flowers like those of may the world stands waiting your debut with arms extended wide i know not what she holds for you tis not mine to decide but wishes from this heart of mine if wishes could endow may benedictions e'er entwine with laurels on your brow end of poem this recording is in the public domain the constable's sale by ignatius brennan read for librivox dot org by phone like vultures hang round near their coveted prey awaiting the moment to make the attack or like the avenger awaiting the day he'll plunge the cold dagger a hilt in the back of one he imagines has done him a wrong they stand while the constable bellows his song and hold in their mind as the uppermost thought we wonder how cheap this or that can be bought they never once think of how hearts have been wrung nor how the choked sobs have been mingled among those hot scalding tears as the driver and van came out for the goods on the levying plan those goods on the curb from the dresser to pail and sold per the law at the constable's sale we stand and look on while the constable cries his once thrice and thrice and is going and gone we watch the crowd surge with the coveting eyes saying should we get this a good day's work we've done and in amongst the throng we see women and men who've listened ay listened time time and again to sermons and charity sermons that turn the hardest of hearts but to them yet unlearned heard them make bids on the tables and chairs the carpets that covered the floors and the stairs the cabinet stove and the clothes for the beds yes even the pillows that rested the heads of some poor unfortunates in this sad vale whose goods are now cried at a constable's sale the crying is finished the constable's through the curb has been cleared of its home-wrecking pawn we venture to ask what became of the two who furnished the wares for the sale they have gone to god only knows was the cruel retort that fell from the lips of a being whose sport is to cry out aloud in a voice strong and clear how much am i offered how much do i hear and mayhap the thing he is proffering there is the crib where the mother has oft knelt in prayer when her child's fevered brow told the story too true the story of sad dissolution and who in that crowd at the curb would for once pull the veil from that hallowed crib at the constable's sale we know tis the law but we venture to say the man who designed it was heartless and chill a shylock we'd guess who must first have his pay and when the last penny is gone from the till he'll sell even the mattress that gave to those rest who came in at eventide tired and distressed where is the gain if the man be so poor that he can't pay his debts it can't help we are sure to sell his last chattel then say to him you this day must start in on life's pathway anew tis wrong un-american down with such laws that flaunt a man's poverty bring out guffaws from the rabble that stands without thought to bewail the hard luck that brought on this constable's sale end of poem this recording is in the public domain married for money by ignatius brennan read for librivox dot org by phone he married for money the neighbors all say course they're in position to know maybe he did as some do this this way and have since the long long ago there seems an incentive in doing things rash that is when there's truly a jingling of cash we're slightly inclined to be sceptical though and gulping the statement as true perhaps we'll be rated as passingly slow when we can't see things as they do 
but the girl in the case is good-looking and sweet accomplished and dresses exquisitely neat again he seems happy as happy can be and is i'd be willing to vouch he never has to drown any cares in a spree nor shamble around with a grouch and she seems to think he's the boy of all boys what else should two want when each one's the big noise he's right at his desk just the same as the time he was plugging for twenty per week he guards just as zealously each silver dime as if twere a precious antique he's just as obedient now to the will of his boss as the days he was playing common bill they have a fine auto we hear it is hers they sit in the box at the show she dyke to the minute full evening and furs and he as her husband and beau sitting alongside as pompous as life and to the reporters will johnson and wife now when we look all these cold facts in the face we can't take the statement as true married for money when one finds no trace of truth but we've always a few anxious it seems to despoil the good name of any one seemingly climbing to fame of course we don't suppose we will ever be charged with wedding for cash hardly so and then spin around with our cocoa and large just blowing ourselves as we go but if we do the above is no joke the grundies will all collapse watching our smoke so we figured this way if some lady fair who's willing to take a small chance on letting us handle her bankroll and square on the turn about wearing the pants will gamble none ever will dub us a slob if we hook up thusly and hold our old job end of poem this recording is in the public domain the telegraph operator by ignatius brennan read for librivox dot org by phone he sits and sends worldwide dots spaces and dashes he sits and receives spaces dashes and dots he knows each sound made by the electrical flashes that carries the wisdom of famed polyglots or doles out vernacular strat out quite low to him's all the same as his copy will show he sends out the message that tells of the battle he flashes the other that's brimming with peace he jots down the lisps of the baby's first prattle wired by the mother to father who'd lease the telegraph system just then to return an exchange of greetings his dear ones well yearn he sends forth the messages telling of famine the ones that affirm beloved copious reign he also sends some that tis best to examine for fear old lack censorship failed to maintain the facts in the case told in flashes or a wire again he sends those with the truth we admire he dashes and dots out the congratulations sent by happy friends to the groom and the bride and too he receives with the least expectations the message that tells that some loved one has died he wires of the markets the weather the sea the tales of depression and prosperity he strikes off the ball score the racing of horses and all current news for the newspapers then sends on the store of banquet whose courses brought sweet inspiration to women and men he wires of politics both pro and con with nobody asking which side he is on he copies the nineteen and thirty-one order he puts his o okay k when the trainman will sign and fearful that aught towards the danger line's border he keeps his ear open to things long the line he gives the white block at the engine's shrill shriek or holds it at bay till the train runners speak his ear is so trained that a call for his station is heard as distinctly as calling by name he springs to the key with a keen exultation that oft times has lifted him up into fame a friend a good friend to all mankind is he this night of the switchboard and night of the key end of poem this recording is in the public domain the sales lady by ignatius brennan read for librivox dot org by phone she seems born for her work as her prowess is such anywhere she may handle she knows it by heart and though she be irish or english or dutch you would guess her the firm or at best a big part as the sale seems the important thing she must do the truth is in that line she's one on the jew 
she ranges in style from the blonde to brunette and she knows what mates best with her color of hair she's plump fat and dumpy with no room to let and too just the opposite tall thin and spare in age well she varies forever and anon but eighteen and up we'd be reckoning on but the age doesn't matter the size cuts no ice her skill is the thing that's amazing to me and the soft pedaled way she has telling the price and making you like it as smart as can be she's not there to sell just one article no you'll be shown her full line for your due to go she'll show the fat lady how stripes up and down will make her look slim and for her very spare plaids or the mottled or stripes running round with ruffles and flounces caught up here and there she knows too the colour of goods she should sell to match the complexion to make one look well her task though quite hard are so born you would think she ne'er has a trouble or sorrow or care but she has them in turn yet they ne'er make her shrink or swerve from the duties she's destined to bear she keeps her own counsel and fights them the while and covers them o'er with a sunshiny smile she's one of the links in that very chain that turns round the wheels in the trift mill of life when treated with justice she'll never complain and does her full share without quarrel or strife if we all did her work in as thorough a way as she this old world would be better today end of poem this recording is in the public domain Past, Present, and Future by Ignatius Brennan Read for LibriVox.org by Philip Gould What has become of the old-fashioned fellow, Always so happy, congenial, and mellow, Whose countenance beamed while he'd talk of the masters, The sculptors of marbles and prized alabasters, The painters who brought down to his generation The world and its peoples, on since the creation, the writers of song and the penners of story, the life-work of all who are wreathed in glory. This man, who knew Cicero, Virgil, and Homer, knew them in fact, not in paltry misnomer. Catiline, Seneca, Caesar, and Horace, from Chaucer on down till the pages were porous, who always had time for a classical chatter, from the lightest to the most philosophical matter and though nowise rich he was aught but dejected and died of old age most revered and respected he's gone in his stead there's a different fellow who couldn't be happy and wouldn't be mellow who does not but figure on buildings and rentage mortgages discounts and extra percentage stocks bonds and deeds and the best plan to borrow e'en and anon yesterday and to-morrow he dies in his prime what disease? That's the question. The card on his box reads, Acute Indigestion. We fear in our hearts for the next generation, Money-mad folk with the steeled heart vibration, The face of pure mirth as completely denuded As a ninety-day note with the interest included, The eye seeing nothing but dollar sign, dollar sign, dollar sign in transit, The ear hears percentage, percentage, percentage From the man who demands it, the mind for the real sweets of life is disabled, could not tell a classic, unless it be labeled. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. The Telephone Girl by Ignatius Brennan Read for LibriVox.org She sits all the while with unerring attention, Watching the light as tis flashed for her eye getting our party as soon as we mention the number if not she will find out just why giving us all information she'll know this nice little lady who answers hello she rings up the number that bears the chill message that tells of misfortune of sickness or death the one for inquirings of freight or expressage and those of light nonsense and those of great breadth she rings to the friend and rings to the foe, this nice little lady who answers, Hello. We ask, where's the fire? And she'll give the location. We ask, for the time when a clock has run down. We ask for the hour that the train leaves the station. We ask when the circus is coming to town. 
We've asked, we'll confess it. Could we be the boo of this nice little lady who answers, Hello. We blame her for all of the telephone troubles when wind, sleet or flood puts a break in the line. For then it would seem our anxiety doubles and our temper stands out like an old porcupine. We ne'er give her troubles. One thought as we go. This nice little lady who answers, Hello. If every employee in every station was right on the job like dear Nelly or Pearl, we'd have better service in every nation. And this is no jolly Miss Telephone Girl. She's the real indispensable one we all know. This nice little lady who answers, Hello. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Go to Church Sunday by Ignatius Brennan Read for LibriVox.org by Betty B. Next Sunday, you know, to the church we will go, and we'll all fall in line to the letter, when we'll list to the creed per the minister's lead, on the homecoming all will feel better. We'll feel that we've rendered a duty we owe to our God and ourselves and our neighbor, and show to the derelict woman and man of the world that our banner of charities ever unfurled we rush on our way through each succeeding day and wish we could only go faster to fight in the strife of this battle of life with seldom a thought for the master who gives us the weapons to win in the fight the brain and the brawn and the wisdom and sight the health and the strength ah could we give the same the tax we'd impose would not brighten our name we're rightfully made in God's image, tis said, and we'll guess of his nature partaker. And since we expect every mode of respect, why not give the same to the maker? He asks once each week, once each week that we bring, old and young, one and all, to his house where we'll sing. His praises for blessings bestowed, and likewise for crosses oft chiefest of gifts in disguise we argue and fight over which one is right on this and that doctrinal matter and while we fight on over matthew and john the devil is cleaning the platter so if a disciple or catholic jew episcopal methodist baptist or who resolve on next sunday we start in our might to worship the god of our fathers aright end of poem this recording is in the public domain. The Fulfilled Prophecy by Ignatius Brennan Read for LibriVox.org by Alan Lawley Today is the day the emblazoning star Called forth the shepherds from fields afar and bade them take their steps and go to Bethlehem in manger low. They would behold this blessed morn, the promised Saviour newly born. They would behold this prophecy of ages filled as pledged to be. Ay, this was centuries ago, the same star still with rays aglow shines on and asks all mankind come not to the sound of fife and drum but to the sweet toned chimes appeal that bears the peace on earth's best seal and not to the manger but instead to shrines with perfumed flowers or spread to shrines with joyous harp a ring to shrines where sweetest voices sing, To shrines where gladness fills the air With hymn and chant and thankful prayer, To shrines where God's anointed men All tell that story o'er again, The story of the Christmas morn, The story of a Saviour born. End of poem This recording is in the public domain. The World's Sweetest Story by Ignatius Brennan 
Read for LibriVox.org by Alan Lawley. List, the sweet tone bells are pealing, pealing from the steeples high. Hark, the choirs are gladly singing in most perfect harmony. Every one we meet looks happy, has a cheerful word to say, and how well we know the reason, our Redeemer's natal day. Christmas, day of days, we gather at the shrines to hear again that two thousand year old story told by God's anointed men, telling of the eve proceeding of two strangers, man and wife, seeking shelter as tomorrow meant for all a precious life, telling all about the stable of the wise men of their guide, that strange star that led them onward, blessed star of Christmas tide, telling this world's sweetest story, with these characters aglow, Joseph, Mary, and the infant, twenty centuries ago. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Ash Wednesday by Ignatius Brennan Read for LibriVox.org by Alan Lawley Remember, man, that thou art dust, and unto dust thou shalt return. These words were given us in trust, and in our hearts should rightly burn. With zealous flame of purest love for him who reigns, from throne above, for him who in his wisdom gave this sharp reminder of the grave, the grave where all things earthly end, the grave that covers foe and friend. This sharp reminder, yes, tis true, in those since first we lisp the name that means so much to me and you, we e'er were taught to reclaim the heaven one time closed to us we must be ever vigorous and valiant that we do our part in right or might with bayonet heart yet bear in mind these words so stern that unto dust thou shalt return now would not that once a year at least we're told to stop and think that while our minds are fresh and clear, we may, perhaps, be on the brink of that chill resting place, the tomb, wherein our bodies will assume, when just a mite of time shall flee, their first originality, we might plunge madly, madly on, till time and tide had come and gone. Today we seek the chancel rail, Absorbed in penitential thought, and garbed in sackcloth, while we hail the words with this firm message fraught. Remember thou art dust, old man, designed on the Almighty's plan, that plan that brings to dust all men, and though restored to life again, to life so well exemplified by him, our Saviour crucified end of poem this recording is in the public domain the mother church by ignatius brennan read for LibriVox.org by alan lawley written for our sunday visitor the thoughts that fill us as we stand before thy massive form and scan thy steeple o'er and see the gilded cross well set on high are those that thou wert never born to die thou livest today not just in song and story but in the bloom of youth and proudest glory 
the bloom of youth yet centuries have passed since first they mould by master hand was cast to be perfected yet by minds inspired again till time does end to be admired revered and loved and ever most respected and though attacked to never grow dejected that promise made thee that the gates of hell shall not prevail against thee is put well for oh how oft and oft have en thy sons and grouped amongst them once anointed ones turned strength against thee as against a mother and smote thee with all strength to build another and too we find the ones who knowst thou brought through age on age the very book now taught who stand in other pulpits than thine own and try to make their teaching grow where sown when if their right the gates of hell prevailed the pledge of pledges spent itself and failed again come blows from those who know thee not who throw thee o'er into the cauldron pot to wreath and seeth as in that ancient day when pagan Diocletians held full sway those men who tear that saviour pledge asunder yet thou lookest on like he and never wonder we find once more the ones who do not care and though their steeple rises twice the height in air who let the light be placed upon the hill refuse to look its way and never will the soul's salvation unto them's small matter and all this talk of god is simple chatter yet still thou standest with foundation firm not to be loosened by the rat or worm and flauntest thy proud standard to the breeze that reads i've preached god's truths for centuries yea thou wilt ever stand his true defender until thy colours wave o'er all in splendour End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. It's time to bid them stop. By Ignatius Brennan. Read for LibriVox.org by April 6090, California, United States of America. Murder? I love foulest brand. Is running rife today. The brain and brawn of choicest land is held no more than clay. The blood that filled those sterling veins is gushed forth night and day, and serves to fertilize the plains and wooded hillock height, and cause the crystal mountain stream to take the crimson stain that tells the tale of wail and scream, of mangled, bruised, and slain. Again, the sea gulps up its dead as shells upon the shore cold mars himself looks on with dread at madmen drunk with gore at madmen soaked with human blood the proudest product of our god we see two bullies throat to throat begrimed blood-stained and maimed we watch the eyes that truly gloat o'er each hard blow well aimed we watch their strength diminish too as blow on blow is sent they clench they tug they strike they chew till nature's force is spent they fall they pommel while they can could savage brute do more at length appears a man a man who stops this scene of gore he says to these belligerents you stop right here and now go to your homes in peace from hence and cleanse your gorish brow go to your work in field and shop as this must stop as this must stop. The master bullies of today are grappled throat to throat, 
they fight in war's most deadly way and they too laud and gloat as these death-dealers pierce the air and murder more and more the youth the strong the brave the fair lie sweltering in their gore the aim at first was quick and true and none thought of defeat to-day they fight alike the two who pommeled on the street to-day strong men must raise on high a hand not prone to drop and fling the standard towards the sky that reads you stop you stop these christmas times let's hear again sweet peace on earth good will to men july first nineteen fifteen on europe's awful carnage end of poem this recording is in the public domain the broken sleigh by ignatius brennan read for librivox dot org by elaine conway england driving along a country road on a blustering wintry day we overtook a boy and a horse and a grist at her home-made sleigh broken down for a runner hit k thrash in an icy ditch and the sleigh was held in the v-shaped crack and was fast in the vise tight niche the poor lad's face bore trouble's trace as he tugged and pried away with an oak fence rail and to no avail to help release the sleigh and he worried too as we both well know for his troubles were more than one he had made that sleigh on the summer's day while he planned on the winter's fun and again he knew that his father who had trust in his prowess chided in some when he got back home and the boys in the neighbourhood would never tire in their taunts desire to bring the facts to his mind of that fateful day when he drove his sleigh like a fellow with both eyes blind yes a thousand arid one things crossed his mind as he pried with that old fence rail but his eyes shone bright when he hove in sight and he felt we would hear his tale he told his story straight and true how the snow filled up his eyes and his sight was dimmed and his fingers chilled and swollen to twice their size how the horse was wild and hard to guide as a horse is in a storm but he knew the road and he knew this ditch when the countryside was warm and he knew but we bade him tell no more that his troubles we'd help him share so we then price loose the broken sleigh and improvised right there a runner made from the old fence rail then we tied his horse behind our heavy rig then we took him in and we drove on against the wind till we reached the little cross-road town with its blacksmith shop and mill when we had the smithy duplicate the runner and better still we turned on back to the icy ditch where with shovel axe and pick we smoothed the road so there'd be no more bad holes where his sleigh would stick when the boy drove home there were none to chide his woeful plights that day for the road was fixed and his grist was ground and he had his much prized sleigh and we felt better by far that night in fact have on since then as this bit of charity done that day had made us both better men there's a moral that goes with this little tale and it's full of the choicest weight tis this when you trade o'er the road of life that the road isn't always straight and smooth as the well-kept boulevard that the motor car's been o'er but it's full of ruts and holes and ice and washouts by the score and again you'll not always find the one who'll give you the helping hand when he finds you stuck in the ice or the mud or up to the hub in stand but you who have heard of these goodly men 
on this blustering wintry day who helped the boy from the ice to the mill and the shop where they fixed his sleigh keep this in mind should this luck be yours to find on the road of life some fellow creature fast in the ice when the storm blows on a rife don't pass him by but help him out as done by these goodly men then smooth the road with a pick and axe so that none will stick again and try not forget this little tale that i tell in such simple way of the men and the boy and grist and the horse and the well smoothed road and the sleigh end of poem this recording is in the public domain the siren song by ignatius brennan recording by elaine conway england the sirens abroad in this beautiful land the sirens abreast of the beautiful sea she's singing a song that but few understand to music arranged by the skilled master hand tis sounded to some like the opera grand she's singing to you and she's singing to me the songs that she sings are so joyously sweet and full soft and light as the may morning's ray each line blossoms forth with a message replete with strains from utopia's busiest street where all is perfection and near will you meet with aught but the choicest of sunshine and play she sings of the no master no flag but the red she sings of no church and she sings of no creed she sings of no god and no government head she sings of free love but she'd place that instead of death to us part as so many have said songs ah the songs of destruction indeed again she does sing when my songs all come true will labour not more than two hours for the day with same compensation as if we would do ten hours slavish toil as she'll choose to construe her audience cheers at the old songs anew and chant every one if at work or at play we sit idly by while the singing is done and near raise a voice against her treacherous song while legions on legions of mind she has won to her way of thinking our government's son is doomed to go down for her coyly primed gun we still lie dormant yet rated as strong a million of men who all speak with one tongue and bound by the hoop that is stronger than steel is worthy of note when their gauntlet is flung at the foot of the fount where our freedom first sprung did arnold do more when our country was young the answer is no when we speak as we feel you lawmakers act while it's yours yet to do tell these destroyers of rule and of home place on the ballot is gone until you discard all these tongues of the treacherous view we grant you free speech but you must not construe it to mean you may shatter the government's dome you tell them get out if they will not comply with our constitution from first to the last tell them no rag as they call it must fly above our old red white and blue to the sky she is destined to wave from the mountain top high when theirs of the red will be left with the past end of poem this recording is in the public domain uncle henry talks the malcontents by ignatius brennan read for librivox dot org by elaine conway england i'm setting by my fireside just as happy as can be with my seventh daughter's baby setting straddle of my knee 
and i'm wishing firmly wishing that all humankind were free as that prattling little youngster and its grandad calls that's me now when i say free i mean it just exactly as i say for there's but one set of free folk in this world of on to-day and them's the ones that take that good old book from where it lay and heed its blessed guidance in the good old-fashioned way you take the chill agnostic and his dogmatism doubt he's shackled worse than any slave the caesars knew about he never feels god's spirit from within or from without as his little seventeen-ounce brain has put our god to rout he believes alone in matter and some big creative mind that makes this universe of worlds of wondrous different kinds he just believes the things he sees by narrow sight confined but the bible no sir eel sir he puts that old book behind he can't believe in jesus as the son of god and then he'll quote if he is god i'd like to see those wounds again the same old doubting thomas pictured by the gospel's pen and he'll claim he's so much smarter than the common run of men again you take the socialist who spiels utopia from the sun's rise every morning till he's set in every day a preaching discontentment though he calls it t'other way that fellers sleeps o nightmares while i'm basking in the hay he gits his information from them red backed books of his writ by them cunning fellers who make red backed books their two o four and who sell them to the toilers of the sweat stained honest fizz while they smoke their clear havannas where the cold winds never whiz the doctrine's oh so beautiful it listens mighty well and it's doped a little more so when there's some new book to sell but they'll have to change the hypo pretty soon and here we'll tell there's a nigger in the woodpile and the comrades know the yell and then we have another bunch the unitarian who say that our lord jesus christ was just a common man that is there's one lot say this but there's yet another clan who say they don't know that he lived but just so short a span you take their master savage he whose christian names minot he says our treasured bible is a complex bunch of rot and that the bible of the jews is mongrel polyglot but he this fellow savage is a whole blamed cast and plot now just because our saviour doesn't come round spring and fall with hello mr tommy payne and bobby ingersoll and how is volta making out so sign us great and small this fellow say we don't believe what we see that's all you know i believe there's times when god just sets and laughs his best at these little bits of fellers with a smaller bit of zest who take themselves in earnest and in serious protest to proceed to knock the bible and its teachings galley west now if they'd set and cogitate if all the finite brain that exists or ever existed or will e'er exist again could be crowded into one great mind it could not then make plain how to prepare so as to yield the smallest grass blades grain they might then turn to thoughts where why they'd read the other side that tells of just how small we are and how them that denied have come and gone and left no legacy but one decried while the good ship Christianity's a riding storm and tide. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain.
jealousy by ignatius brennan read for LibriVox.org by elaine conway england is there one day that passes by that we don't hear this hue and cry what's wrong with this old sphere no not a single hour much less a day and said with much distress an awful place down here there's just one wrong some call it greed but there's a fitter name indeed a name that's deeper deadlier a name that puts a blot on blur on every land on every sea and yoked with woe and misery jealousy jealousy greed yes greed is bad enough envy too is crude and rough but these would ne'er have been but these would ne'er have been had not some craven formed the plan to sow within the heart of man amongst other seeds of sin the one that kills where'er it thrives the one that's wrecked more human lives than fire and sword and shot and shell the one that gives a smack of hell the one that holds us slaves in fee and swears we never shall be free jealousy jealousy she sits to-day upon her throne decisively her own a rigid autocrat she sends her forces on their way to conquer only ne'er dismay or bend to diplomat we know her wards with ease we trace the lines in each possessor's face they never see the sun and shine that thanks to god are yours and mine unless they've quelled all rivalry and triumphed over you and me jealousy jealousy god made us each to fill one place and not to lead in every race but help another win then when he's won to grasp his hand and say right from the heart just grand and praise his discipline there's nothing warms the cockles up there's nothing fills ambition's cup better than to have one tell you've surely done your part so well and since we all appreciate the heart near once possessed by hate let's help destroy the cursed tree that holds the world in slavery jealousy jealousy end of poem this recording is in the public domain post election thoughts by ignatius brennan read for LibriVox.org by philip gould election day is over and the balloting is done the tally sheets disclose to all just who have lost and won some come with wreaths of victory from out the fierce-fought fray but victors or the vanquished they are patriots to-day we need heed no post-mortems on if this or that had been our sovereignty has spoken and the battle ceased its din then why not do the gracious thing in simplest christian style and ask the lord to guide our new officials all the while we're awed because the mexicans are always in the fray blighting their posterity and wealth in surest way they know none than the war gods call that call of death so bland and all because their party is not chosen to command the only way we differ is our fight's not one of gore we start to thwart the country's choice as soon's elections o'er we breed contention and unrest from which we should recoil with ne'er a word of praise to give for honest faithful toil should any foreign country dare to run our colors low how quickly we would heed the call to deal the crushing blow obeying to the letter our good general's command because we know that unity of action saves the land we'd never quiz the politics of him who told us do the thing to save the honor of the old red white and blue again we'd never ask our comrades side by side us then if they voted for this party or that party's chosen men we read about the tories in those stirring days of old 
and know of men like Arnold who was bought by English gold. They're branded traitor when they should have borne another name, and have their niche to be revered within the Hall of Fame. We'll ne'er have peace and plenty worth the trifling Grecian dam, if we but heed these Tories who care naught for Uncle Sam. Those chaps who howl calamity forever and anon, and never rightly happy till they've brought the panic on. So Mr. Politician, with the smile and hearty shake, and cursed store of diatribe, we all are wide awake. The day is gone when you can work your blight of honest men, when e'er a man needs putting out, we know just how, and when. Our ship of state is manned by men who know the shore and sea. They know where at the buoys float, and where the course is free. And guided by a master hand, no need that we should feel but safe when true America is at the pilot wheel. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. While We're Here by Ignatius Brennan Read for LibriVox.org by April 60090, California, United States of America We ne'er could understand just why a person had to do and die before his cherished name would be inscribed with sturdy scroll upon that roll that splendid roll within the halls of fame when while he lives in doing good his service is best understood from personal experience we truly like the present tense in hearing words of praise when lips are sealed and sense is dumb and we have left for kingdom come who cares for these displays hewn out of marble cast in bronze or painted like the sainted ones so as our doctrines while we're here and men of brawn and brain and cheer man well our ship of state we feel inclined to tell of them and crown them with a diadem so bright and up to date that all may see their photograph long years ere comes their epitaph end of poem this recording is in the public domain To Aviator Walsh by Ignatius Brennan, read for LibriVox.org by Betty B. See that feller Walsh go flyin' through the atmosphere? Pretty sight, there's no denyin' way he did appear. Just like some big bird a soarin' with his wings outspread. Hear his motor snappin', roarin' as he passed o'erhead. But he thwarts our understandin', comin' earthward in his landin'. In them spiral glides o' his we just watched and said gee whiz charlie there's no doubt about it ye have got the grit couldn't do that stunt without it hope ye always hit mother earth is smooth and pretty as we saw ye do for twould be an awful pity if ye went askew up there where things atmospheric never do the panegyric then the coming down would be something none would care to see walsh old boy them dips are pretty and them spiral glides smack of all that's smart and witty artistic besides make us feel we're glad we're livin in this wondrous age but right here will be a given counsel like the sage keep your mind in good condition so twill grasp acute contrition as the time may come some day when you'll want to think and pray killed at trenton new jersey one month later End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Mother's Day by Ignatius Brennan. Read for LibriVox.org by Betty B. Let us revere tis Mother's Day. It comes with sweetest benediction, and too within the jurisdiction of Blessed Mary's month of May, day when every son and daughter on the land or on the water will run back through days and days to those sweet and homely lays sung by her while ever keeping watch o'er them awake or sleeping mother wear a sweeter name wear a word in song or story that is wreathed with more glory those there are enshrined by fame that will ring on down the ages in the tales of bards and sages but for sentiment and love no word blessed by him above nor bespoke by any other will compare with this one mother she it is who beams with joy 
when her very self has given choicest gift to earth from heaven that new soul in girl or boy she it is who soothes our sorrow with her all is well to-morrow she it is who'll stand beside hers when troubles doth betide see her with her heart strings ringing to the cross on calvary clinging none there are but sing her praise none but wreath her round in glory none but tell the same sweet story of their cherished mother's ways so to-day we wear in honor of her who's our greatest donor white carnations every one father mother daughter son grandpa grandma and all other in sweet memory of mother end of poem this recording is in the public domain just you by ignatius brennan read for librivox dot org by joshua gall i glance towards heaven's diadem all set with stars in purest blue i search my sky and find one gem tis all i need dear heart just you i now list to the song-birds thrill each note inspiring rich and true there's just one songster to my will and she dear one is you just you i walk by beds of roses so refreshed by heaven's sweetest dew one flower's all i rightly know it blooms for me alone tis you a thousand hopes i set in dreams so seldom even one comes true but one there is well said it seems and that blessed hope sweetheart is you end of poem this recording is in the public domain new year's resolution by ignatius brennan read for LibriVox.org by Joshua Gall. We don't think one could rightly make a better New Year's resolution than to his inmost workings take a pledge to guard his constitution. Great big broad and wholesome pledge cuts as well with either edge. Now if we'd take this solemn vow, we'd hear and heed each conscience warning. We'd never draw to foals somehow, nor sing we won't go home till morning. R. E. Morse would never play his tom-tom in that doleful way. We'd go to bed when bedtime came, and get the rest our bones demanded. We'd rise and dine in happy frame before the grub was second-handed. Buckwheat cakes and sausage hot coffee, four cups like as not. We'd never have to bother Doc concerning aches and indigestion, nor suffer from a nervous shock that makes our stomach quiz and question all about our fertile brain that couldn't stand the tempting strain we'd jog to work each day on day and show the world we love to labor we'd jog to work each day on day and show the world we love to labor we'd never gossip by the way about our proud and stuck-up neighbor none need fear but what we do a right to christian heathen jew so while our souls and bodies stand revolting at a dissolution Let's keep the matter well at hand, pledge fealty to our Constitution. Then we'll move without a fear, on on from New Year to New Year. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. The Night of the Pencil and Pad by Ignatius Brennan Read for LibriVox.org by Ian King Here's to the lad of the pencil and pad, who works while we sleep for the press, who moulds into sense the news items sent hence in a way we'd be proud to express, who gets for all favours a thank you or two, and seems to be pleased with our generous view. No play anywhere, no festival, fair, no wedding, no party, no dance, could be the success that this lad of the press who hands out the boost in advance. And many's the juvenile heart he's made glad, this night of the pencil and night of the pad. He's always on hand and right up with the band when anything's doing of note, with the throng at the fair or the mob on the square, the happenings rightly to quote. Though close to the pulpit he rarely will perch, we'll speak of him truly, we've seen him in church. He works through the night by
by the shimmering light of the bulb or the gas jet or lamp and lists to the clang of the typewriter's bang and the telegraph instrument's vamp and ring of the phone in its nerve-wracking way so's we'll have the news when we rise for the day we'll not recite more of his labour and chore though just a synopsis we gave but in fancy we see when his soul is set free and his body consigned to the grave the heavenly portals all swinging a glad to welcome the night of the pencil and pad end of poem this recording is in the public domain The Christmas Spirit by Ignatius Brennan, read for LibriVox.org by Joshua Gall. Talking about your holidays like fourths of old July, Thanksgiving with her taffies, nuts and hunks of pumpkin pie. St. Patrick's Day and Labor Day are all so full of glee, but there's nothing like the Christmas times that hits the spot with me. You'll note as soon's November's hiked from off the reel of time, the atmosphere grows mellower, the sun is in its prime. The moon looks down so wistfully and sort of seems to say she wouldn't mind a coming down to spend the Christmas day. The grouches seem to emigrate to grump grumpy land or else they get their livers fixed and smile to beat the band. As every feller that you meet is happy as can be and seems to say this Christmas biz is just the dope for me. Old tightwad who eleven months has tied his purse strings taut who's kicked and growled at every one, especially when he bought, is crowding round the corner with the shoppers full of glee. His countenance displays the fact it's just the stuff for me. We tumble into Wonderland, the land we've trundled through. We see our homes on Christmas when our lives were bright and new. We see the gifts from neighbors and from all our kith and kin, and perhaps we wish, I know we do, to live them o'er again. We see the turkey gobbler when his goblin is o'er, dished out with loads of stuffin and big doughnuts by the score and we truly wish our stomachs were as good as they used to be so's we could hit the turkey in the fadeaway degree so gentlemen and ladies in conclusion we'll suggest let's all recall the feelings we've at christmas times possessed and when we get them rightly on next blessed christmas day let's lock them in our bosoms then throw the key away end of poem this recording is in the public domain. In Memory of Daniel V. Hughes by Ignatius Brennan Recorded for LibriVox.org by Joshua Gall We stand beside your rigid form And gaze upon the face so true A face in life so kind and warm Tis hard to couple death and you Will we ne'er see your smile again? Nor gaze into those eyes of blue? nor hear your voice in counsel plain? Tis hard to couple death and you. And is it so that never more we'll clasp that gracious hand and to receive your greeting as of yore? Tis hard to couple death and you. And is it possible until this earthly life is spent and through that we'll ne'er have your laughter's thrill? Tis hard to couple death and you accentuated in the tone that gives the answer pray be still his journey through his work is done he bows unto his maker's will end of poem this recording is in the public domain